For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lameni. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna joins me to discuss his column titled Chief Lutuli Leadership and Savings. So Raymond, you remark on the 50th anniversary of Lutuli receiving the Nobel Prize 10 years ago, hardly being noted or commemorated as opposed to the anniversary of MK. Why do you think this happened? What happened, I think, is that First of all, um, we are in a very violent society and there's a tendency to celebrate militarism. I respect MK. I uh, believe that MK play, played an heroic role in the liberation of South Africa, but that's not all that freedom is about or the liberation struggle was about. And it's very important that we pay adequate attention to Chief Lutuli, but Lutuli has been neglected. Um, I'm not sure exactly why. Partly it's because uh, he was uh, under banning orders uh, from early days of his involvement in the ANC. But also I think people seem to think that a person who preached nonviolence although in my view, he did come to accept the formation of MK. People find uh, nonviolence is not attractive. Now, I think that's very silly because we have to have nonviolence. We have to have peace. If we want to have a society where we live together as a society, we can't have a violence. So we have to value nonviolence. And the formation of MK was an exception to the norm of and principle of peace and nonviolence. And that's what Chief Lutuli preached. And that's why, why I think he's valued, I value him, but that's why I think people have not got to understand the importance, the long vision that he had, although he accepted the exceptional nature of the war of the apartheid regime against the people of South Africa, that there need to be, needed to be an armed struggle against it. He regarded that as a conditional exception. And once we had a new constitution, there had to be peace and nonviolence. And I think people not appreciating the value of peace and nonviolence may be why they don't appreciate and celebrate mutually sufficiently. Raymond, you are always uh, determined to argue that he was a militant and not a moderate. How does this square with his attitude to the armed struggle compared with Mandela and others? Well, um, it's not true that Lutuli uh, opposed armed struggle. He did initially uh, have a lot of reluctance, as did the leader of the communists, Moses Kotani. They believed that we hadn't adequately explored a peaceful uh, political action against the apartheid regime. But after a lot of discussion, uh, going through the night and over days and weeks, um, both Kotani and Chief Lutuli. By the way, Kotani was very close to Lutuli, even though Lutuli was a Christian and Kotani was a communist. He, he respected Kotani's advice more than anyone else. He would always say, bring Moses here. And both of them had been cautious. Uh, first, uh, Mandela went to see Kotani and Kotani uh, said this is just not on, and they stayed up the whole night arguing. And then Kotani agreed not to oppose it in the NEC. But then they went down to the chief, and there was a big meeting in the uh, sugar fields, and that's where eventually everyone agreed, uh, or there were some reservations, but people did accept the formation of MK, but separate from ANC. So I don't think there's a big difference between Lutuli and Mandela. When Mandela did anything, he would always go and report back to the chief and he had a lot of respect for Chief Lutuli. 
And you, you always uh, refer, you've referred to him uh, as possibly playing a prophetic role. How do you understand that, Raymond? Well, I'm not a religious person, but um, I understand prophetic as me not meaning uh, forecasting and fortune telling. Um, I understand playing a prophetic role as reading the signs of the times, understanding um, what is going to happen in the future, and um, looking at the development of trends at the moment, bringing your political activities into line with that. And that, in that way, Chief Lutuli was prophetic. And lastly, why do you place so much emphasis on preparation in Lutuli's life and how does it relate now to his leadership and sacrifice? See, a lot of people um, are associated with very radical ideas and the radical ideas sometimes require you to get into a situation of danger. And when some people get into the situation of danger, they suddenly find reasons why they're not able to move further. And the reason why they're not able to move further is that they may have understood the Bible or revolutionary doctrines very well, but they hadn't prepared themselves emotionally and psychologically to do what they undertook to do. Now, Chris Harney also understood this very well. Before people were about to cross the border, he would call them aside and say to them, are you sure you are ready? Are you sure that you've got um, uh, no unfinished business here? Because you don't want when you get into the country to be worrying about this and worrying about that, because that will affect the performance of your mission. Mandela also said, if you say you are prepared to die, you've got to understand what that meant. In the case of Lutuli, when people were going to go in the defiance campaign, they had to be ready to go to jail or even to die. And that's why he sat down with the Natal executive of the ANC and said to them, are we all ready for this? Because if we are not ready, we can't expect others to do this. And they uh, agreed on a pledge and they prayed and they dispersed. They did this vow and pledge and it's something that is very prominent uh, with Gandhi as well, to make an oath, to do a vow, like when they burned um, Indian documents in 1908, there was also a vow before, an oath before they did that. So uh, it's very important in the eyes of Lutuli, Mandela, Hani and others to be ready to do what you undertake. That was Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Krima Media's Polity about his column titled Chief Lutuli Leadership and Service.